Greetings gamers, I'm Shoot Kapow, and by now, you know the drill. A new Pikmin 4 trailer just dropped and there's a lot to cover, so let's cut my viewer attention to break and get right into it. We open of course with a shot of a pod flying toward the planet, and then see our captain and a red bulb orb, but then we're thrown immediately into some new stuff. First off, we see the Peck's tourist crab turning along with some kind of water geyser similar to the fire geysers, except with, you know, water. In the next shot, we see that the Mamuda is returning too, now with some kind of new furry texture. Pretty exciting. We see a couple more quick shots, the first showing us some puckering blinos and a new aquatic enemy, and the next showing us a whole kitchen with some sort of plant-like elephant creature. I'm excited to see what it does, but this all confirms that we can go inside of the house. I don't know how that works with the timeline, but we'll come back to that. We also see Colin laying on the ground, waiting me to believe you have to rescue your base cast of characters in the tutorial. Right before we get into the real bulk of the trailer, a quick shot of Ochi following a blue, smoke-like scent trail plays. That could be an interesting mechanic, but I don't know if it's used much. The next thing I want to talk about is these little blue gems that are brought back to the research pod by the Pikmin, and for now seem to be functioning like those little gold nuggets from 3D's mission mode. Next, some of Ochi's abilities are shown off, like how you can carry things and smash pots. In this kitchen shot, we see something in the distance that could potentially be some new form of the calcified crush blat. When they show him swimming, we can see Skeeter Skates and a Hermit Cromat hole, as well as a cave opening and a Toady Boyster. So many things in such a short time! This is gonna be fun to edit, I'm sure. Oh, she is shown fighting next, and in the background we can see a pumpkin and- Wait, what's that? Ooh, never mind, a Game Boy Advance! Gee, this sure makes me want to download Nintendo Switch Online so I can play- Minish Cap? The treasures apparently help to upgrade the ship, unlocking new areas which are shown off in another couple of shots. The first is this desert-like area that seems to somewhat resemble the forest naval. I'm super excited for that, since while I'm famously not a fan of the level, its map is pretty fun. We also see that the little gold nuggets are brought back to story mode, and the clam from Pikmin 1? They brought it back! Let's go, Pikmin 1 clam enemy fans, stay eating! Unfortunately, the next shot doesn't reveal anything new besides what might be an electric gate on the very left of the screen, but our next shots are real doozy, revealing the inside of the house again, this time in a living room, and showing us the armored cannon beetle from Pikmin 1. Oh my god, this is actually so huge, we stay winning! It doesn't look like there's anything else that's new, unfortunately. Exploration isn't limited to the surface, though. As we delve into the caves and take a look at some new things. This shot's interesting, showing a big fire geyser that I'm not sure can be put out, and a strange gate that doesn't look like it can be knocked over. Maybe only the Pikmin can fit through? The next sub-level is reminiscent of Clockwork Chasm from 3's mission mode, featuring treadmills, buttons, fans, and general mechanical aesthetics. It seems like the caves in this game are going to be much more unique than they were in Pikmin 2, and I'm excited for that. The next shot is of what looks like a boss fight with a giant yellow wally hop, and the background looks unlike any cave I've seen before. It doesn't look like night mode, though, and why would we need caves when we just started talking about them? New stuff. Dusk pustles being carried as one whole object, a treasure connected to the ceiling by a spider web, dweevils or arachnorps perhaps, and some weird blue thing that might be an ice hazard of some sort in this castaway shot. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Confirmation that this game takes place after the bad ending of Pikmin, giving us an actual timeline split in the Pikmin series. This is the Olimar Pikmin, or Olimin as the community calls him, and what looks like some sort of Pikminized form of Ochi's species. They steal the castaway and jump into this hole, showing us something called a Dandori battle. This looks like a simplified version of Pikmin 3's bingo battle, probably since, now that it's required, they should make the minigame accessible to new players who can't just skip it, but I still feel like not bringing back bingo battle would be a bad move. It's a very beloved game mode, and having more multiplayer modes never hurts. And besides, it's not even that complicated to begin with. Then again, adding something new always does help to keep the game fresh, and create a new, more accessible experience for new players. Also, Olamin does look different than in the bad ending cutscene from Pikmin 1, probably because the team took some creative liberties with the design to make it more interesting. Next, we're shown a sort of base camp where we can upgrade our stuff. Ochi's abilities can be leveled up with something called Ochi's Puff Drive, and it's shown here that you can upgrade his carrying strength, jump attack, his rush, his swimming, and his healing, as well as unlocking the ability to jump and to dig. You can also build upgrades with the blue gems that you collect, which looks super neat. I miss Pikmin 2's treasures giving you new abilities, but this is a nice way to do it too, I guess. Next, it's time to finally get more info about Night Mode. You can go out on night expeditions from the base camp, and the planet's creatures get more aggressive during them. We're shown a more matured kind of bulbar larva here, which doesn't really make sense since they're supposed to live in trees until they fully mature, at least that's what I heard, but who cares, new enemy. Next we see another new Pikmin type, the Night Exclusive Glow Pikmin. We don't know what these guys do just yet, but we see them use a spirit bomb type attack to stun a puffy blowhog, so they're probably pretty good in combat. Their little hives are called Illuminals, which attract predators, so you've gotta defend them for the night. I'm super excited to see the different ways gameplay will be in night mode, and hyped to get started when the game comes out. From there it's shots until the end of the trailer, so let's get a couple of freeze frames. First, some exciting developments are the reveal of purple Pikmin in story mode. Hopefully they've been fixed since their last appearance. Next, we see that rocks and wings are also back. Rocks were shown earlier, but it's always nice to see them again. We also see 
see the little star bits going into the Luminol at night and spawning more Glowmen, so I wonder if that's the only way to get more or if enemies count as well. Next up are some bosses. There's this fuzzy scorpion looking thing in the desert, as well as this moth-like enemy underground that attacks with freezing winds. This confirms that ice is a hazard in the game and can damage you and potentially stun or kill your Pikmin. Oh yeah, white Pikmin are in here somewhere too. I'll, I'll put them in here if I can find them. That's all for Pikmin 1, but they go on to reveal HD ports of Pikmin 1 and 2, which are out now, so make sure to go pick those up now. The product placement in Pikmin 2 has been unfortunately removed, and I don't know if they've patched all Pikmin 1's glitches, but either way, they're well worth it, especially if you haven't played the games before. Apart from that, a demo of Pikmin 4 comes out on June 28th, and that's all she wrote. However, that's not all I've got to write. There's still more to discuss, such as things shown on the website, and some more speculation for things still unconfirmed. First off, from the website, caves are confirmed to work like they do in Pikmin 2, stopping time on the surface as you delve deeper and collect treasure. I like this, especially if they make it work well with the cave's design this time around. The website also has official renders for every Pikmin type as well as Ochi, and shows that the Rescue Corps ship is called the SS Shepherd. Hey, that's the name of one of the characters, isn't it? Attention! This is not a drill, Sparkvium is in the game, and Hey Pikmin is now canon. It's over. Apart from that, the main area is called the Sun Speckled Terrace, which is pretty nice. A detail I noticed was that you can only have three Pikmin types out at a time, the other ones will stay in the Onion until you put a different type away. Interesting, and a good way to balance having so many types available, but we'll wait to see how it plays out. This box says, there's always tomorrow, with always in italics. This implies, to me at least, that there's no hard day limit, and you can spend however long you like on the planet. Wow, this really is Pikmin 2, too. You're able to rewind to specific times of day, as shown here, and your personal ship, called the SS Beagle, can be summoned to any landing area you find, along with the Onion making exploration of these larger areas easier. The Dandori and Dandori challenges, as shown off in the trailer, seem to be a combo mission mode, bonus challenge, extra mode, and two-player battle, which is interesting. Seems versatile enough to work, but only a time will tell. It's about all I've got, but believe me, I'm not going to stop covering Pikmin content on this channel, just like Nintendo's never going to stop trying to sell game vouchers.